Christ. People I like to be around. Amen. 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 Especially when they talk about big cookout tomorrow and Sunday. <laughs> you know, I can go for that. Amen. <clears throat> but it's so good. Brother Chris has been my friend a long time. Brother Baker. Many of you all here have been friends a long time. Amen. Everybody needs a friend, don't they? Amen. My neighbor, y'all pray for him. He told his wife a little while back, he said, he said, uh, he said, I feel like the only friend I got is that old dog over there. <laughs> and uh, guess what she did? Next day she bought him another dog. <laughs> Bought him another dog. Everybody will have two friends. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. God is so good. And your pastor is so good, isn't he? He's from the what? The show me state? Yeah. They don't believe nothing out there. They don't believe nothing. Even if they see it, they just doubt it. It reminds me of a friend I got. You know, I'm, I'm a hillbilly, southern hillbilly. You know, back in the mountains. Then you do, I mean, God, I've... I, I've Everybody's backwards, I guess. They go backwards and they walk, everybody walks sideways go to go on the heels, you know. <laughs> you know something like that. And it's just it's a terrible thing. And uh, uh, I was telling Chris, I said, Chris, uh, well, I was telling my friend back in the mountains, I said, I saw a dog uh, walk on water. And you know, he don't believe nothing. He's like bad as Chris. Yeah. And uh, took him over out of Show him, show, show him that old dog walked on water. And he's like, yeah, that old dog can't swim, can he? <laughs> <laughs> I, he could probably share that with a better than he. But he, you got to show him th some things, amen? amen? But God, the Lord showed us a lot of things in life, hasn't he? Right. And he's Lord, isn't he? Mm -hmm. The Lord is Lord. I'm just so glad. He's my Lord, amen? Amen. Uh, how many years now? It's been 45 years I've been saved. Amen. I ain't regretting one bit of it, amen? Amen. amen. You know, amen? Now, let's, go to, let's go open our Bibles a while. We've been singing and shouting and everything like that. Amen. And uh, Philippian, book of Philippians there. You know them people over there in Philipp Philippi. I guess from what Paul is sharing us here about them, they're kind of like, they, they, were, they were kind of a persecuted, the church was persecuted back then. Yeah. <clears throat> they were like, uh, uh, you know, under Roman government, about like, you know, the United States government now, you know, they, they persecuting Christians and churches and yeah. if you conservative, the conservative, I guess they, they link conservatism with Christianity. If you're, if you're conservative, you must be a Christian, you know. I wish they were, amen. Yeah, amen. You know, everybody's conservative ain't Christian. Yeah. Matter of fact, everybody says the Christian ain't Christian. Right? And, and the numbers are really going down on that, aren't they? You know, and it's... Uh, but <clears throat> we, need, we need good Christians in our day. <clears throat> I need to be a good Christian, don't uh, what's that, brother? Let's loosen it up, brother Baker. I'm against You're against him. <laughs> He's against tie. We had an old that preacher came to us one time. He didn't have a tie on. And I said, I like that. He's like Mike here. He and he had a book. He wrote a book on tied to Rome. You ever heard of that book? Tied to Rome. He says that tie. He says that tie has something to do with Rome, Roman oh. Catholicism. That's why. Yeah, you know, we need to. Do, we need <laughs> Trying to be formal and and, uh, and look all that nice and look real nice and everything, but j just a few verses from chapter two that and really just want to talk about Jesus the Lord, Amen. Jesus is Lord, isn't it? Amen. Anybody anybody disagree with that? You can't disagree with that because He's Lord, isn't it? He is Lord, Amen. Let's stand and we're going to read a few verses from some. From uh, Philippians chapter 2, and uh, <clears throat> read about the Lord. Look not, let's begin with verse 1, we'll read down through verse 10. Oh, no, we'll read down through verse 13. How about that? Mm -hmm. said, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, 
consolation, you know, that's, that's a prize, isn't it? If, if, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy, that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God hath, hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and the things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your precious word. Thank you, God. Let it speak to our hearts. And God, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us. And, and God, fill us, Lord, with our hearts, our ears, our minds, and my mouth, dear Lord, to speak for thee and to share what you have, have for us to hear tonight. And we'll thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Now, he has great credentials, doesn't he? The Lord has great credentials. He says in Matthew chapter 28, says, All power is given unto him in heaven and in earth. Imagine that. Amen. Amen. I mean, every reason to call him Lord, isn't it? Do, 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 you know, I, I think sometimes we, we take for granted the Lordship of Christ. And we kind of become a little, you know, masters of our own souls or masters of our own... What's, what's that poem that guy wrote and said... The master of his own destination, the captain of his soul, and all that stuff. Wonder how he's doing now. Wonder where he's at. If he doesn't have the Lord Jesus, I'll tell you where he's at. Yeah. Yeah. He's in the burning hell, isn't he? Right. Yeah. And it's a sad thing, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> we live in a day when everybody wants to be their own captain, mm -hmm. their own Lord. You can't tell me what to do. You know the reason people are married for 50 some years and 53 years because they both agree that, you know, the other one is better than the other one, just like it says here, doesn't it? Amen? I always had the last word with my wife. What was it? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the Lordship of Christ, we, we, we need to understand that He is, has all power because. He's highly exalted. And here Paul, Paul I believe understands clearly the Lordship of Christ. Amen. You take this when he got saved. What does he say? Lord, what will thou have me to do? Yeah. I'm afraid some Christians are a little slow submitting to the Lord. Right. You, you, you see that because he writes to them, the Corinthian church and the problems they had. And you read all the churches in the book of Revelation, uh, the seven churches in the book of Revelation, and only one it doesn't say anything really bad about it, is it? All the rest of them had problems. And you think, we don't have problems. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Right. 
No, no, no. We do. We do have problems. Amen. Amen. And, you know, and, and this church has problems. You read all these epistles. Every, every epistle has something to encourage the saints of it with. Yeah. It's encouraging them. They're in a battle there. They're in a situation where, you know, if they speak up for Christ, you know, their lives are at stake. Isn't it? Their lives are at stake. We're not even confronted most with that today, are we? I'm, I'm afraid sometimes even, you know, the little, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the little flag I have here, the, uh, with the, the Israelite flag, flag and the American flag here. And, and I think about it, I said, well, what if I just, you know, rather than just on Sundays and, and coming down to preach, would I wear this in some neighborhoods and in some, some areas of town and maybe around where the college kids go? Wonder, wonder what they'd do about that. Now, I'm not going to just want to go out there and pick a fight. I give them some tracks, amen. But, uh, you know, but uh, some of y'all probably, you know, just, well, just throw it in their face there. They need to submit to Israel. No, everybody needs to submit to God. Amen? And, and the Lordship of Christ. You ever heard that thing said, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord of all? There's a little to that, isn't it? But, you know, it's not, it's not all the total, is it? You know, there's Christians, again, who do not submit to the Lordship of Christ. Well, why wouldn't we submit to Christ? There's reasons why. He's the creator of, of all things. He has all power. Matthew chapter 20. If you all look there, we can do that. You know, but it'll take us some time. And I, and I don't see a clock back there. I, I guess that's by choice, isn't it, Brother Cannon? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have a clock, do you? And uh, so, anyway. I, I can't keep up with time. I, I really can't. I don't. <laughs> so, so y'all, <laughs> somebody back there, we'll we raise your hand up there. One says, you know, he scratches back there, you know, he's, people in church tell me that I'll do my back like this year. It's, it's cut it off or something, you know. Matthew chapter 20, 28. And the word of God reads unto us that Jesus has all power. Now, you, you, we don't have all power. And if you had all power, what would you do with it? We're never going to have all power. Amen? Amen? But we have access to all power. How about that? Amen? Amen. And for him that worketh in you and he that worketh in me, right. both to will and to do his good pleasure. Amen? Amen. Right. So we need Jesus. We need the Lord over our life. Amen. And then we read about what He does, and sometimes we forget that He, that he does have all power. Why are we not getting prayers out saying, this is loose, we're losing this, and, and we're losing that, and we're losing things, and, and uh, we're losing people, we're losing our families, and, and, and we, we, kinda, we, we get discouraged. We get discouraged. But God's Word is... Still here, amen. amen. It's never changing. <coughs> Jesus Christ will never change. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. He's never going to change. He's going to always be all powerful. That's what, that's part of you know the definition for Lord. Is if you have power and you have authority and what else you have, uh, you know, honor, have respect. And Jesus has all. He fulfills every credential that the world needs. Amen. We need Him more than He needs us. Amen. Amen. In chapter 28, and what is it, verse 19 or verse 18? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. He's lacking in nothing. He's lacking in nothing. Jesus Christ is all power. Jesus Christ is all powerful in the sense that he, he, he created everything. Now turn back near there in Philippians, turn to Colossians chapter 1. Philippians, Colossians chapter 1. 
He's my Lord. Now some people just have a problem with people being over them. And you can, get so, you can get so caught up in the world and caught up into yourself, you think, okay, I, you know, I don't, have to, I don't have to count to nobody. I believe there's Christians like that, and I wonder why you, you, know, you can't submit to authority. Something simple as that. Like pastoral authority, or like uh, authority in the home, the children to, to the parents, and all that good stuff. Amen? We like that, don't we, children, parents? You know, finally somebody listen to us. Yeah, but that don't last always, do it. Say amen, parents. It sure don't. It sure doesn't. Amen. What in Colossians chapter one? Was Colossians one verse uh, sixteen? Well, it talks about Jesus in verse verse fourteen, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. The world belongs to Jesus. Amen. Everything. They say, How was the world created? Jesus. T- Spoke the world into existence. I say, how did he make it? From nothing. He made it all from nothing and it, he said, stand out there on nothing. Right. And it's his world. Psalms 24 says what? The, uh, the earth is whose? The Lord's. You know, the Old Testament, they use the word Lord there in place of, uh, of Jehovah. Well, the Jehovah Witness used they they say Jehovah that we know God's name, but but the but the Old Testament saints they didn't even say the word. They were afraid to use the word to say the word because of who God was in His lordship. So they just called Him Lord. We know treat Him as a as a as a common friend, and God is not a common friend. God is not your buddy. Amen? God is not your pal. God is God and God is God alone. Amen? And he, the earth belongs to the Lord. So the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of the earth. The world and all they that dwell therein. Somebody says, he, the Bible says he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And guess what? And he didn't have to brand them. Didn't even have to put his name on it, but they belong to him, amen? Yeah. So it all belongs to God. Creation and everything, all the, everything in creation belongs to God. The heavens speak of him, doesn't right. it? We, we don't believe, we don't see those things like we ought to sometimes, amen? amen. Yeah. Christian, we need to get a little deep about the Lord, amen? Yeah. If anything else, Jesus says, you know, you need to learn of me. For I am meek and lowly of heart. Does he say that? Learn of me. What are we going to learn about Jesus? That he's all powerful. He's Lord. He's over all. And you know, in everything, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. Amen. 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 Now, I talk about that thing at every knee, Richard, and maybe you feel like Logan's help me out on that thing. And I'm, t- I'm saying, I wonder how the people in the world, people in hell are going to bow the knee. Brother Baker, you, you, you want to tell me about that one later on? Yeah. Yeah. How are they going to bow? You know, because, you know, how can we say that Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. How can we say that He is Lord except by the Spirit? But he's the Lord of all, isn't he? Lord of creation. Then it says he's the ruler over all. And that means ruler, lordship, authority, power, uh, preeminence. He has the preeminence. I think he talks about in, in, in the Colossians, doesn't he? Having the preeminence. The word preeminence means that it's 
What's everything's underneath him? Everything. And I'm glad to serve a Lord like that. Amen? Amen. I'm glad that I'm a part of the family of God. Amen. Amen. They sing the song, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I'm joined as with Jesus. Hallelujah. I forget the rest of it. But we'll sing it in heaven one day. Amen. <laughs> But now let's say that, let's go a little step further too. He's the God, He's the Lord of conversions. Amen. Amen. We discuss his, his credentials, we discuss his, his creation. And who else could create anything? No, most every time, all, all I've been accused of is creating a mess. <laughs> of course, most of us won't agree with that. Every man will speak good of himself, won't he? But a faithful man, who can find? Somebody trustworthy, somebody to speak. You know, and one of the characteristics of Jesus Christ is, and we'll get to this in a minute too, is that you've got to be honest about yourself. Amen? Amen? If you ain't honest about yourself, how can you be honest about anything? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you don't have to tell me everything about you either. Amen? There's people come up and want to confess. I said, look, it's, if it's just between you and the Lord, just keep Amen. it that way. Am I right, Brother Baker? Amen. You've been pastor long enough. You don't want to, as one old preacher said, you don't want to dig up more snakes than you can handle. Yeah. Right. Amen. You don't want to do that. You don't want to just fool around with some mess there. But, you know, uh, back in our text now, what is it? Uh, ch uh, ch chap he says we ought to work out our salvation, which means that... These people, he's speaking to them as saved Christians, saints of God. Amen? Yes, sir. People that have been born again, washed in the blood of Christ, Jesus Christ. But Christ had to pay a great price to save us. Amen. Amen. And it says that in our text there, it says, And he being found in fashion, verse 8, as a man humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death of the, of, of the cross. And this is all for us. Right. He didn't do it for himself. That's right. This is God's pleasure. This is God's glory to save us. Amen. Amen. His glory, amen. Yeah. Everything he does is because of his glory. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything he does is glory. Yeah. Where he lives is glory. Yeah. Amen. amen. That's right. Everything, his, every, every thought is glory. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. And then know his name was Jesus, you, you know, praise God. Amen. God. We need to be touched with the glory of God. We need Amen. to see the glory of God. Amen? Amen? Thine be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. To Amen. thine be the glory. Lord's Prayer. Anyway, read on that verse of wherefore God hath exalted him because of his sacrificial life. God gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Now, that's where you need the Lord if you're lost today. Right. If you're already saved, you understand exactly what I'm saying, that Jesus Christ paid the price for my life. Yes. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 while we're thinking about some other verses. Acts chapter 20 says Jesus Christ says He died... And he paid, he purchased us with his own blood. Amen. Now most of us don't have two cents. We can't hardly buy a piece of blood. I can't even buy a piece of chewing gum. I have big chewing gum. <laughs> so Selena so brought me, so I said, I need some chewing gum here. So I, I feel, I, I said, it stops me from yawning. Piece of chewing gum. <laughs> you know, you just put the chewing gum in there and it stops. And she, she gave me the pack. And I said, I wonder if she's giving me the whole pack. I mean, she didn't open it up, say, here, get one. And then she just threw the pack. I said, I'm going I'm, I'm to be a gentleman about this thing. I'm going to say, sister, did, did, you, did you give me the whole pack? You know? <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> no, no, no. And it's, it's just being a gentleman about it. You know? I didn't want to say, just take for granted that she's giving me the whole pack. Some of y'all who took it and run. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> took it and run. You just say, I don't need that stuff. But Jesus Christ pays our, paid our sin debt. Yeah. 
Therefore, what we, we belong to Him. Amen. And what, 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 what is the Lord? The, the Lord is the owner. See, well, the earth is, that shows ownership. That means He's the Lord of the earth, doesn't it? So if He owns the earth and He's the Lord of the earth, the earth is the whose? The Lord's. So, you know, you're in the earth, we are of the earth, the earthly. And so he gets, he, 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 he purchases us out of sin for himself. Let me read you chapter, um, Acts 28, uh, 20 and verse 28. It said, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Amen. 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 He pours out his own precious blood for you and me. Yep. That shows ownership. Amen. You know, sometimes, you know, people, you know, like, you know, they, they don't want to recognize, you know, that the government owns everything, right? Basically in America, don't they? Yeah. Man said, I've been paying taxes for, for 45 years. He said, I could have bought, I've done bought this house 15 times. <laughs> paying taxes on it. So we need to like Brother Bates get one of them things right on the road and just forget about it, you know, paying taxes. Amen. <laughs> Whatever else. But we forget about it, don't we? That we, that we don't belong to ourselves. Look at the verse here in chapter 6, isn't it? Chapter 6, uh, in a few verses there, verse, verse 19. What? Yeah. He'll pass on. What? He asks you to question what? He says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own. Yeah. That's so simple, isn't it? That is so simple. You are not your own. Don't you remember? Don't you like that day when, when Christ saved you? Amen. You know, you think about Paul. What is Acts chapter nine when he got saved and and he said, "Lord, what will Thou have me to do?" I mean, how many of you Christians, like how many of us, have even submitted daily? I mean, Christ says, "Take up the cross daily," doesn't he? Yes. So I, I think, you know, recognizing and honoring God and His Lordship should, should be a daily thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Should be a daily act of worship that we can worship Him. Amen? Right. Not just when we come to church, but a daily, uh, you know, for me by myself and talking to the Lord. L Lord! Now, Lord, I come to You in prayer. I recognize you in your power. I recognize you in, in that you purchased my, my, me from my sins. Amen. You know when the Lord saved me that day, February 19, 1977? I didn't have, no, I, you know, I knew I had a Lord in my life. Why? Because I immediately turned from where I was going and doing the things I was doing and started following him. Amen. Amen. And trying, trying to find my way in the world. That's what I was doing. Just find my way. Aimlessly wandering here. Doing that. Doing this and doing that. And you know. And that day that Christ saved me. I said boy all the wandering's over. Amen. I said I got somebody I can follow now. Yeah. I got somebody I can trust. I got somebody I know that loves me. Somebody's giving their life for me. Amen. And the blood of Jesus Christ. His son cleanses us from all sin. Amen. And what a day that would be. Amen. What a day it was when God said, You know what it was. Amen. Amen. You know what it was. You turned your idols to serve the true and the living God, didn't you? Amen. Amen. That's right. Smoking dope and lying and cussing and all kind of things like that. But, it, but again, yeah, the part in here, you know, you, you have to receive it. Turn to Romans chapter 10. You have to receive it. I, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm getting to the next part. What's the next part? Is that he's the Lord of Christians. Christians have, have the Lord. Amen? Amen? Creation has a Lord. Conversion. You know, God is able to save to the uttermost them that come unto him by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He's able to save, isn't he? Nothing's too hard for God to do. If you want salvation, you can receive salvation. Right. Amen? Yeah. 
It's not about anything. Why is why everybody in church? They don't want Christ. They don't want the Lord. Amen. Now, man's just, he's just puffed up in his pride, isn't he? Right. He just, he thinks it's, you know, it's too good. I don't want nobody telling me what to do. You know, little old kids, you know, have to beat them half to death, you know, to get them to submit, to submit, and they still don't say, oh, you sit down, but I'm sitting down, but I'm standing up on the inside. <laughs> I believe there's some Christians like that out here. You know what? You may make me sit down. You may make me conform, you know, and I don't want to conform to every way you're conforming to. That's right. That's right. Sure don't. I'll conform my own way. Yeah. Hear it all the time, don't you? Yeah. I'm a Christian, you know. You can't tell me how to serve God, you know. Well, the Lord says, read the Bible. Learn of me. Amen. And if you learn what, what he says, you need to follow him. That's, that's a simple, just simple rule. Just follow him. Amen? Amen. Now, we sing this song, if Jesus goes with me, I'll go anywhere. If Jesus goes, you ought to go with him. Amen. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the song we're all back with it. If Jesus goes with me, I'll go anywhere. Is heaven to me, wherever it may be. If he is there, I, and it's good, isn't it? I like it. I love the music. I love the melody of it and everything else. But, you know, the truth of the matter is, he's leading. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 8 and uh, what verse is 13 of somewhere around there chapter 8 I like chapters uh, he says as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God aren't they yep. now if you have a problem I got a problem with you know wanting to follow Jesus but I just got saved hmm. you did do you know, like some some guys that scratch his head here, you know, and you get to trying to think think of something, you know, what's it? Uh, is that the word for uh, I don't really know in sign language? Anybody know sign language? Some of you know sign language. Is that, is that word, what's that word mean in sign language? You don't? Yeah, there's not a word for that in sign language. The word for that in sign language. <laughs> I'll bet you rest your heart. Hey, Amen. There's a word for that, isn't it? All right. Uh, amen. I live. But, but uh, what's the problem? Well, let's read on. Oh, chapter 10. Now, you need to get saved. You're not saved. You need to get saved. You need to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Amen. He amen. wants to be your Lord. He's able to be your Lord. He's capable of being your Lord. He has all the credentials of being your Lord. He has the heavens and the earth and everything to bow to Him. Why shouldn't He be the Lord of your life? Amen. But you're holding back. You're trying to see. Some people have been waiting to see when I'm going to fall. You know, I don't, it ain't going to last too long. Well, still lasting. And they said, didn't, didn't get a lot of good. Well, I, said, I say encouragement. I, I was discouraged in those early days of my salvation. I just have to trust Jesus on me <laughs> to, to, to even, to, to, for anybody to say anything that would discourage me. Now, my wife, one about the best Christians I've ever known in my life. I probably won't know another one like her. She wasn't saved when I got saved. Now, I understand it. You need to understand this. And she, and I got saved, and I was crying and tears. <laughs> she said, what's the matter with you? I said, I belong to God now. Amen. She said, what? She said, you belong to God. She said, what do you want now? <laughs> and I tell people, I say, whatever I got on now, I'm still on it. Amen. Amen. Still on it. Getting sweeter every day. <laughs> you like that, new sister Linda? Yeah. Bless the Lord. What are you on now? And I look at it, I, you know, it didn't, didn't bother me a bit. You know, some of you think, I guess God say, you need to put a crown on me. You need, to, you need to puff me up. You need to make somebody out of me. Make me a deacon. Make me a preacher. Make me this. Make me that. Find you some word just to serve. Amen. 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 That's all I wanted to do. That's right. First church I went to, started serving there. Church, 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 church. And they were all of the European, Caucasian style because my kids were going there riding a Sunday school bus. And I was like, 
Well, I got to go and find out if they got if they preaching salvation over there. Yeah. How do I know this pre they preach salvation? I knew if they wouldn't preach in what I had received through that book, Amen. Yes, that it wasn't of God, and I'd get them out of there. I went there and the preacher preached, and I thought he was Paul, maybe. But anyway, and uh, and that, that and he come visit me the next day there. Showed me verses in there, the assurance of my salvation. Didn't know a whole lot about the Bible at all. But I knew, I knew first, first John chapter 1 and verse 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. I know that applies to the Christian life, but it applied to my lost life. I was, I was asking God. I was asking. I was seeking. I was trying to find. It was either heaven or hell for me. And at that time, it was hell. Under conviction that I'm going to hell. Most people don't get under conviction they're going to hell. They just, well, you feel bad about this. And I, don't, I mean, I don't understand it. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to hell. I'm like, I'm two weeks under conviction, Brother Baker. And I'm miserable as man alive. And me and my wife, we was, we was actually working. I was, she was working one place. And I was, we were having to ride about 15 miles to our job. Boy, and I made her miserable too. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, something's got to happen. And I said, well, how, how can I, I? And the Lord pointed to me, sin. It's sin in your life. You're a sinner, and I'm going to put you in hell if something doesn't change. And I was trying to find a way out. I was trying to get myself up by my bootstraps. I was listening to Robert Shulman, the Crystal Cathedral. You know, y'all remember him, power of power and everything like that. And then he's a lot of people in hell right now because he listened to him too. And I'm thinking, what can I, good thing can I do? You know, like the rich young ruler. You know, you go sell it all. You know, make me Lord of your life. And uh, and I and I said, Lord, Lord, I, I said, I'm a sin. I need to cleanse, be cleansed of sin. And it triggered that verse that I remembered in a little Sunday school class. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. I said, Lord, cleanse me now. Cleanse me with that wonderful blood. And God worked a miracle in my heart. Saved me. Amen. And became the Lord of my life. Now, why shouldn't I go keep on just drinking? Why shouldn't I just keep on smoking? Why shouldn't I keep on lying? Why shouldn't I just keep on doing my thing? Amen? Yeah. I had a new Lord. Right. Had somebody who's greater than me. I was reading this little thing here. It said, says, uh, uh, what is it? It says, a hero is someone who has given his or her life for something bigger than oneself. I don't know how you read that, but, you know, that's, that's just a little quote there. Isn't it? Somebody named Joseph Campbell. Somebody greater than me came into my life. Right. And, and, and made himself my Lord. Right. Do you have a Lord? If you don't have a Lord, Jesus will save. Here in Romans chapter 10, and it talks about we, we need to be saved. If we, verse 9, chapter nine chapter 10, verse 9, that, that, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the what? The Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. God wants to deliver you. It's a simple thing, isn't it? You don't have to do a lot. For by grace are we saved through faith and not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. God is saving us because He loves us. Amen. And He wants to save you if you're not saved. Now, Christians, let's get on to this point here, no, because I'm not trying to, you know, say, well, uh, you know, well, examine yourself. Work, work out your salvation. Turn back to our text. Then. Turn back to our text. And back in Philippians. It's past y'all's bedtime, but it's okay. <laughs> anyway. But the Lord, listen, when Christ becomes the Lord of your life, our text says that He works in you. So you can work it out of you. Work it out 
from you, is it? Right. How many go like Romans chapter 5 and verse 5? Romans 5 and verse 5 says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given you. Amen? Amen. And then you get saved, Jesus begins to permeate from your life. It's like the guy, you know, he's having problems with wife. She, she'd go down and she'd pray for him. You know, my husband, pray for my husband, get saved. Pray for my husband, get saved. And, and, uh, and uh, the, the preacher said, uh, said, if you'd, said if, you'd, if you'd change a little bit, he might get saved. So she, so she uh, one morning he's going fishing. He knocks over her prized lamp. Breaks that thing. And said she came to the top of the steps there and he said, I was looking, I was looking for I was looking for the storm to erupt. And she looked down and she said, Honey, that's all right. She just let a little bleed through her, didn't she? She gave way to herself and her pride into what she wants. For somebody else, our text says that here, doesn't it? Look at verse, uh, verse, uh, verse. Was it okay? Verse three said, "Let nothing be done through vain glory, strife, or vain glory, strife, or vain glory." But we're trying to win people to Christ, aren't we, Christian? So the, the the whole motive, the whole motive of Christ making us a better person, is that we might shine as lights to a lost world, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, you know, you know, what do you call it? Something salvation? What is it? Life, lifestyle salvation or something? Lifestyle, you know, witness and stuff like that. That's good. We ought to be, amen, life. But the Word is the thing that we want to get to them. We want the Word. We want our lives to be so that it will draw them to the Word. To right. Say, what's, what's so different about your life? I mean, when this woman, she's, she shows that something different about her life, well, quite naturally, he wants to know what made the difference or what makes the difference in my life. What makes the difference, you know, in your life with other people? You've, we've had a long life of living as Christians and stuff like that. What difference are we, what change have we made in ourselves to bring others to Christ? Right. And that's what God's trying to do, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we, we leave some things behind. You know, put, you know, put in, uh, the old man is dead, isn't he? Isn't that what it says? Yeah. And he says for, uh, Romans 14 says, hey, we, as we live, we, we live unto Christ. If we die, we die unto Christ. We are the who? We are the Lord's. Amen? Amen. Amen. And in chapter 1 here in Philippians, isn't it? Verse 21, one of my favorite verses. I love those verses, you know, where they're just, you know, two or three words. <laughs> you can memorize them. Yeah. Verse 21 says, For to me to live is Christ. This is Christ, Jesus the Lord, and to die is gain. But to, but to hang around, but if I live in the flesh, and I, I say, uh, is that right? Uh, yeah, I live in the flesh. In the flesh. Verse 23 said, For I am in straight betwixt two, having desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. When are you going to get the message? When are you going to get, uh, get the message that it ain't all about you? It's all about Christ, and it's all about what Christ wants to do through you and me. Amen. Amen. And that's all, it's, that's all he wants you to do. But we'll complain about ourselves. We'll complain about it. We'll complain about how hard to see you. We'll complain about this. How long the preacher is. How, how this and how this and how this. You know, and it's all about being a witness for Christ. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory, isn't it? Amen? It's Jesus in me. But anyway, let, let, let's look at a few verses. You know, if, give you another verse. Um, what was it? Luke 6, 46. How many of y'all know that? Luke 6, 46. Everybody wants to look. Go, we'll turn back there and look at it. You, you, you feel free to do that. But the Lord wants to make some character changes in our lives, doesn't He? Amen, Christians? Amen. That we can just 
that we can reveal the, the, the lordship of Christ. That we do have a lord over us. We have somebody that's, that's leading us. We have somebody that's teaching us. We have somebody that's directing our lives. Amen? Because right. they remember what we used to be. Don't they? You still take pride in who you used to be. So, not me, preach. I got it. You know, you get quiet. I understand. I do. I understand perfectly well when people get quiet. Matthew, Mark, you, Brother Annie, you understand when we get quiet? I'll say something if everybody get quiet. I say, yeah, you're talking real loud, church. <laughs> I said, you're really speaking up there. You know, no doubt. I know what you're thinking about. <laughs> you know, how does that apply to me? I mean, uh, how does it, what are we in chapter 6? Now, Jesus is talking about people building. You know, you, you get saved, you build on the foundation of Christ. Amen? Right. And he talks about in his chapter here how people build on sand and then the wind comes, the rain comes, and then guess what? That little kingdom is put. You know, you know, you test for Christians is how, how much is Jesus the Lord over your life? Does he build the building? The, the Old Testament says, except the Lord build the building, they labor in vain that build it. Right. Amen. Except the watchman wake, you know, he wake, he's in vain without the Lord. Right. And I'm telling you, Christian, we need, we need, we, we need to, what's, what's that thing says? We need to spin it back a little bit. Amen. You remember the old song says, take me back, Lord, to the place where I first met you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first met you. Remember how humble we were? Yeah. We have, remember how needful? I'm on my way to hell. I'm on my way to hell. And then somebody comes by and snatches me out of the pits of hell. Yep. Why shouldn't he be Lord of my life? I mean completely Lord. I believe, you know, from, from the text, our text and from Philippians, Philippians and all throughout the Bible, you know, you know God, God has a problem with getting us to, to do what he wants us to do. I think we ought to be willing to do it though. But yes. all just kind of just, I say, I wouldn't just use the word stray. Somebody, you know, you've been you've been away from the Lord for fifty years. You ain't even saved. <laughs> that, that's me now. I don't know. You know, I get a lot of people come. I I just got saved when I was six years old, and everything. And then six, fifty years later, you fifty six years later, you know, I just I just come back to Jesus. You know, I don't know if you got I don't know if you got in the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. My Bible reads that old things are passed away. And some of us said, passing away, that's okay too. <laughs> but it's got to be, be a progress in it, doesn't it? Right, amen. amen. It's got to be progressive. Amen. That don't mean you have to join their party. The progressive party. They, don't, they shouldn't even use the word. We shouldn't even call them progressives. Right, right. Degressives. Yes, right. Perverters. Yes. Of all that's right, right, whether in government or whether it has to deal with God, it's got to be right. Amen. 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 Right is right. And God is the Lord, the Lord of righteousness, isn't he? Amen. Amen. He's holy. Yeah. You think about the condition of being holy. That deals with honesty. That deals with sincerity. That deals with uh, love and everything, doesn't it? Yeah. His holiness. And he says we ought to be holy because he is holy. Right. What's wrong with being holy? Represents your Lord, doesn't it? Right. Why well, wouldn't want him to be? You want your children to look just like you. Some of you are accused of being, they accuse your children of being just like you. You're just like your daddy. I've seen him, I know. Is it in a good way? <laughs> Come on, it's usually because they see the bad in them, don't they? That old kid just like you. It's my boy, you know. And now you sticking out his ears about, oh, that's my boy, that's my kid. You ought to go repent of sackcloth and ashes, shouldn't you? Amen? 
And tell the Lord, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me that, you know, I've, you know, had such an influence on this kid's life. And now look at him. Well, I don't want to make you cry, shouldn't it? You don't have any opportunity to, to make an effect, have an effect on somebody's life and, and we don't follow the Lord in what we need to do for children and our families and friends and uh, church members and everything else, do we? It's all about, you know, it, it, it said every, let me just get to this too. He said every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Sometimes... And I'm not saying knowing is wrong, but sometimes knowing keeps people, knowing too much keeps people from kneeling. Kneeling? Is that a bad word? Every knee shall bow? That means he's kneeling? Right? I mean, knowledge puffs it up. Paul says that, doesn't he? So we got to be careful, you know. You know, knowing. I want to know. I want to know. I search out, man. Somebody get up and say something crazy. I'm like, Look, no, you can't say that. <laughs> you can't be saying that stuff, man. You know. Mm -mm. No. I've had to go back and correct people. You know, if, you know, just unknowingly for the most part. Sometimes people do stuff knowingly. But look, look, chapter 6, six verse 4. But, but, you know, the Lord, Lord wants us not only just to call Him Lord in word. Chapter 6 and verse 46 is. Chapter 6 and verse 4. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that which I say? Why, why call Him Lord, Lord? A lot of people call Him Lord or they end up in hell. How do you know? Matt, Jesus says it in Matthew chapter 7, doesn't it? So, Lord, haven't we done many things and great deeds in your name and this and that? And you see all this charismatic, you see all this charisma of these, quote, Christians in the world doing great things. Well, haven't you read that the devil does signs and one, wonders? Yeah. Read Matthew chapter 24, for Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Signs and wonders, you know. You know, so, and they draw away the hearts of even the very elect. We Christians say, well, man, we ought to get in on this thing too. We, we need some downside of, uh, what is that? Song, song, how, song, what, something music. I don't know what it is. Crazy music, you know, coming out of these old crazy, crazy, crazy places called churches and stuff like that and say, this is, this is good godly music, you know. What happened to Amazing Grace? Yeah. How sweet the yeah. sound. Amen. What happened to... Lord, I'm coming home for the old. Was the was the old uh, the old um, the prodigal, isn't it? Yeah. Made that song just because of him. Lord, I'm coming home. I wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. Yeah. The path of sin is too long. I've trod. Lord, I'm coming home. I mean, you ever heard that one? Yeah. Coming, sing it with me. Home, coming home, never more to roam. Open wide thy arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. Oh, man. Isn't it, the Lord, listen, He's provided for us everything we need to be successful Christians. Faithful is He that calleth you, who also will do it. You sit around, hey, hey, God ain't doing nothing for me. It's because you're not asking. He said, if any of you ask in Jesus' name, I'll give it to you. Didn't it? Yes. Jesus said, you ask the Father anything in my name. I got power with the Father. Mm -hmm. John 14, 21. Yeah, I got power with the Father. You ask Him anything in my name and He'll give it to you. James 4 says, uh, it, otherwise, you're asking a mist. You're asking of your own lust. And don't think that you're going to get anything from God when you're asking for your own lust. 
Maybe we're not getting our prayers answered like we want to because maybe it's just all about us, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it'd make my life a lot better if they'd get saved with it. It'd make my life a lot better, you know, if they'd change some things with it. Maybe God would make your life a little better if you're changing things. Yeah. 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 Say change. Yeah. Say change. 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 Amen. Yeah. What's wrong with change? <laughs> change. We ain't talking about your pennies, Chris. Give me my change. We're talking about change in the heart. Amen. You know, that Christ in me. Christ in me. The hope of glory, isn't it? It's the love of Christ yet abroad. And he said, why, why call him Lord? And then and he gives an illustration there. Whosoever, verse 47, whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Whew. Now, how do we line up? Who do we look like? Is he as a man that built a house and he dig deep and laid the foundation on the rock? And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently and upon the house and he could not shake it and, and could not shake it for it was founded on a rock. And Jesus is the rock. Amen. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without, found, without a foundation built a house. Imagine we know how often we warn people that are going astray. Now we warn them about hell. We warn them about you know living an ungodly lifestyle. What? I mean, it seems like it is in vain, doesn't it? You said, don't do that. God, the Lord, He's ruling over everything. He sees everything. He knows everything. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. Nothing can, you know, I say they say, well, well, we just, the wind can blow him away. He can, the wind will cease when he comes into presence. The waves stop. They so Lord drowned him, he can walk on water. And our Lord can do anything. Amen. Anything. Yes, right. Let's not limit God. Amen. We love him. Okay. So why, why limit God? Why limit God? Oh Lord, I, I still Lord. He says, but a man, verse 49, but he that heareth and doeth it lies like a man with a found, uh, that without a foundation built a house up upon the earth against, the, uh, against which the stream beat vehemently and, and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house is great. I think sometimes God will test Christians. I guess one, one major reason for testing Christians is not to see if you will fall, but to show you that you are on the way to falling. You understand that, Christians? You understand? Why, why shouldn't he warn you with a test before you, you know, destroy everything and your Christian life and your Christian testimony? Why not God putting you through a little test? Giving you some insight into real life and living. But some people go on ahead, go on ahead. I was reading over in Kings the other day about that old prophet. Jesus, God told him, go down here and tell these people such and such and such and such. And, and, uh, I, and, and then he and said, you go there and just when you come back, you just come straight back. And then he gets sidetracked on the way back by, quote, the prophet. He said, I'm a prophet just like you are. Now why, should, why would God test a man who had been faithful and willing to go down and do what God told him to do and on his way back. Wonder what got in his crawl, as they call it. Amen? You know, that's a chicken gizzard. That's what a crawl is. <laughs> Nobody knows about that. But what would cause us to not do what God tells us to do? Our day is just too doggone convenient. It is for me too. Honestly. It is just too convenient. God wants to, God has provided, God wants to care. We need to be <clears throat> back in our text, and we, we, we're about to close here. Amen. Oh me. 
But he's Lord. That's my Lord, isn't it? Amen? Amen. I'm glad to have a Lord like Jesus. He had saved me. He'd secure me. He sufficient for me. Amen? Satisfies me every heart's need. Hallelujah. Amen? When I need a friend, I just go to Jesus. Amen? Jesus is all the world to me, the songwriter says. And Jesus is all the world to me. My strength, my power, everything. It's all about Him. Oh, my goodness. Know the cross. The one old preacher says, Oh, that's the most beautiful thing I ever see was the cross. You mean a dying man, blood, he's beat to death already before he goes there. He's bleeding profusely. He's suffering. He's leaning. He's bowing his head. They're mocking. They're scoffing at him and everything. And the man says, This is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. You know, and I agree with him. Why? Because the Bible says, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14, he said, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How do you like that? How, you like? How about Galatians 2.20? What does that say? Let me see what it says. Galatians 2.20. It's uh, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me in the life which now I live. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen? Amen. How much convincing do you need to live a better life for Jesus? Can we step it up a little bit? Can we, can we pray a little more? Can we love sinners a little more? Amen? Yeah. It's easy, man. You know, we, you know we, we go through the pointing stage with the world on it. Now we done got to say that world. Look at them. They all gone to hell. I wish they was holy like me. They would be if you'd be a little holier. Yeah. That's simple to see, isn't it? Amen? If we'd be just a little bit holier. Not a little holier than thou. Amen. But a little holier than me. Amen. So simple, isn't it? I'm kind of simple, ain't I? Say amen right there. Go on. I know you're looking at me like that. It's okay. I, it won't bother me a bit, brother. <laughs> Tell the truth about it. I've been called everything on the side. Don't bother me a bit. Say, people, don't that bother you? Why? No. I have a Lord, you know. I have to look up to Him. Don't trouble my heart. Why should I be troubled about what you say? I'm not going to become a part of your... I am going to say stupidity, but that would be too good for you. Work it out. What is it? Work it out. Work out your salvation. Verse 12. If we're going to be... He's our Lord and Terrence going to be us, then it ought to start with us, shouldn't it, Christians? Or we need to be humble. How about humble? Verse, uh, verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. One of the prerequisites for being a great Christian, a good Christian, I, I say a great Christian, is humility. Humility. What does Micah 6 8 say? Now, I know I'm talking to a lot of Christians here, and I'm glad to, you know, because you, you don't have to turn all the flipped pages and everything, because you know what I'm saying, amen? Because you've been there and heard that and read that, amen? Right. What does Micah 6, 8 say? says, in, What doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly, to love, what else? Mercy. <laughs> mercy. I know Christians today, no mercy at all. They won't forgive you. They won't forget about it. They will do nothing. No mercy. No mercy is, mercy is when God let you escape the judgment that you deserve. Right, right, right. You deserved hell. You deserved hell. But God had mercy on us, didn't He? But mercy is a characteristic of Christians too, isn't it? Yes. Should be. It be well. It should be one of the greatest things in the Christian life. Mercy and walk humbly with thy God. That's too hard for me to do. 
Oh, Lord, help us, Jesus. Amen. We need a little bit of character change. How about love? Love covers the multitude of sin, doesn't it? And some having compassion makes a difference. He talks about it in these verses. In verse 1 said, If there, there be therefore any consolation of Christ, if there be any comfort of love, who's comforted by your love? Your grumbling. See, he talks about that down in what in the verses does. In verse 14, Do all things without murmuring and disputing. Why would he insert that in there? It's the natural instinct of man. Right. You got a lot of stink in you, man. I mean, I'm sorry, did I say that? Yeah. There's a lot of stink instinct. Give you a little joke on that one too. Mama skunk told little Johnny skunk, said, "Go find your brother, son." She said, "How will I find him, mommy?" She said, "By instinct." <laughs> Y'all don't know nothing about a skunk, do you? You don't know about a skunk, do you, sister? You ever seen a skunk? You don't want to smell one either. And there's some people just skunks. <laughs> you say amen. And we ourselves in time past were skunks. And it ought not even be mentioned among us anymore, should it? We talk about the queers, the homosexuals, and all these things. They change it and this and that and the other. What change have we made since we've been saved that makes a difference in people's lives? Other people. Other people. So he says that, let not look at verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Also on the things of others. Oh, Christians, what is the Lord teaching us? Lord, have mercy. <laughs> oh, it sounds real spiritual, doesn't it? I had an uncle, I mean, I don't know, they just, they just, I just, they was crazy, drunkards, bootleggers, gamblers, everything you think of. And he'd always use the word Lord Jesus. He used the word Lord Jesus so much, everybody started calling him Lord Jesus. I'm serious as I can be. Serious as I can be. I had the privilege of leading him to the Lord, though. <laughs> Sure did. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Amen. And you know what some of you know what his wife said out there later to the Lord? Oh, you ain't got nothing. <laughs> I'm just concerned about you too. Amen. I hope you're saved. At least he humbled him heart, his heart and received Christ as his Savior. Oh, the Lord is a great Lord. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised is he, isn't he? In the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness, beautiful situation, the joy of the whole earth, His Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of great, great King. And God gives His people joy, doesn't He? Amen. Paul talks about it in chapter 4 there, doesn't he? You know? Rejoice in the Lord always! And again I say rejoice. We shouldn't be going around and all, oh, can't you see how sad I am? Can't you see how bad life is for me? Can't you see I'm rich? I can see it. But can you see it? Yeah. What's your problem? You think it's something to be proud of? I'm really having a rough time. Get over it. Get some help. My help coming from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Amen. I'll lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord. Get some help. Amen. Let me think of, I'm all right. I don't need no help. You, you need plenty of help. And I do too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, God help us. Amen. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I, shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid of? I mean, he probably writing to these people, you know, in, in, you know encouraging them in the Lordship of Christ. Because they're struggling, you know. How do we deal with this Roman government? How do we deal with these people here that'll take our lives if we say something about our Lord? And we're turning the world upside down, aren't we? <laughs> Brother Chris says, no, we're not. We're turning the world upside down. Inside out, upside down, or something like that. But the world needs us. 
Jesus is coming pretty soon, isn't he? Amen. And that's what our Lord's going to do. He's coming to get us. He is. Signs look real good now, too, don't they? Everybody's really, everybody I know is preaching, you know, end times messages. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You know, you think, you know, you don't set a date on it, though. Don't set a time. The Lord will come when you think not. And he doesn't know when he's coming because he said his father's got it all in his power. Amen. When he's coming back. Acts chapter 1. But let me just do one last thing. I like a little song. And I, every time a little girl used to sing it at church. And it's called, Do They See Jesus in Me? You know that song? It said, Do they see Jesus in me? Do they recognize your face? Do I communicate your love and your grace? Do I reflect who you are in the way I choose to be? Do they see Jesus, Jesus in me? You know, you look into the perfect law of liberty, you can see. You ain't blind. Some of us. He's Lord, isn't he? Let's pray. Christ is Lord. Now, if there's some areas that we can can improve on, Christians. We can make a difference. Make a change. Amen? Make a change for the better. I want to be a better man. I want to be a better Christian. I want to love the Lord more with all my heart, soul, and mind. Might. Love my neighbor as myself. You have to meditate on it and pray on it a little for so it sort of get in you real good. And then when it gets in you real good, it will get out of you. For out of the heart proceeds things. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You'll tell people what you're all about. You'll show people what you're all about. Amen. And be proud of it. Whether it glorifies Jesus or who. I think we use it for the glory of our own selves, isn't it? To God be the glory, great things He hath done. So loved He the world, He gave us His own Son. Great things. Glorious things of Thee are spoken. Zion, heal of our God. Arise, Christian, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon Thee. Church needs to shine. Our light needs to be brighter every day. So let our love be shed abroad. Something to make a difference in people's lives. I don't have time for argument. I don't really have much, I don't have time for debate. People need help. We need help. Let's make a difference, Christians. God bless. Pastor Hannah. Lord, bless us as we go today. I thank you, Lord, that I can call you, Lord. Lift up my eyes and thank you, dear Jesus, for being my Lord. God, I thank you, Lord. And not only, Lord, for, you know, for eternity, but, Lord, for all, all of eternity, dear Lord. Never leave me nor forsake me. Oh, I like what Psalms 23 says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. All right, come back tomorrow night.